Hi folks, my name's Ashley, I'm one of the founders of Skira and I'm here today to show you a few of the highlights in the Construct 3 release 379. Let's jump in. There's absolutely loads of new stuff in this release, it's a huge release, I'm just going to cover a few of the highlights. Here we go. So first of all, I'm going to just show you that we have a new exciting export option for Xbox. So this is based on the WebView 2 technology by Microsoft, which is also used in our Windows WebView 2 export option. It's now been made available on Xbox and we've now provided uh, official support for Xbox. This is based on the Universal Windows Platform or UWP technology. This is suitable for publishing to the Xbox Live Creators program. Uh, it doesn't appear to be supported on the ID at Xbox uh, program for the time being. Uh, that's Microsoft's decision, it's out of our hands. But it's, uh, it's there for you to use, you can uh, get your games running on Xbox with that. And in addition to that, you can now find on the add-on section of the website, there's an Xbox Live UWP plugin, which will provide access to things like sign-in, achievements, and so on. Now, uh, the situation around Xbox publishing is a little bit complicated. Um, if you want more details on that, I've got some uh, blog posts I've written over the past couple of months, um, which I'll link to in the um, video description. This covers in more detail the current situation with Xbox, Xbox publishing and uh, what you can do with Construct. So if you're interested in that, give it a spin and uh, let us know how it works out for you. We're interested to hear feedback on how that goes. Okay, next up I'm going to highlight uh, a major new feature in this release uh, which we're calling Flowcharts. Now if you've ever designed a RPG style game or needed a conversation tree where uh, later parts of the conversation depend on your previous choices, then this is going to be a great feature for you. So here we've got a whole new flowchart section in the project bar and there's a whole new editor here which you can see on my screen now uh, for setting up flowcharts. And these are a series of uh, nodes and they are connected to each other. Um, each node has a list of uh, names and values, so this is like a small dictionary uh, data uh, inside each node. So in this case you can have, for example, a uh, message to display to the player and a list of possible answers beneath it. This is a questionnaire example I'm showing here, but it can of course be used for different things like conversation trees, uh, even state machines for AI uh, type activities and more. So um, as you can see each um, node has some outputs which connect to next nodes and then depending on the answers you choose you'll go through a different branch of the flowchart. Now flowcharts by themselves do not do anything. Um, there's a new object to go with it called the flowchart controller and then you control the uh, logic of using this flowchart with the event sheet. So you can see the logic for that here in this event sheet in this example. And if I preview the project, it will ask a series of questions and then depending on my answer, it will then ask a follow-up question. So if I say I want to make games, I'm interested in using coding, but I don't already know how to use coding, then it will recommend me this uh, Learn JavaScript in Construct uh, course, which I highly recommend if you're interested in learning JavaScript coding. So that uh, is, a, is a major new feature. Um, the, if you think of the relationship between flowcharts and the flowchart controller, it's very much like timelines, where a timeline by itself uh, does nothing um, unless you set it to play on start, uh, but you control the timeline using the timeline controller object. So um, a, the flowchart is very much just like a data structure, and then you use the flowchart controller object to navigate your way through it using logic in your event sheet. So there's a couple of new examples on flowcharts in this release. So uh, the one I've just been looking at there is flowcharts questionnaire. And there's a more complex example in the quest flowcharts, which is more of a sort of text-based adventure. So take a look at that and that will show you what you can do with that future. We're not done with that yet. We will have more improvements to flowcharts coming in later releases, but uh, take a look and uh, see what you can do with it. Moving on again, um, we have another new feature in this release called HTML layers. This is quite a big upgrade on what you can do with HTML content in Construct. Now to show this off, I've got the standard cave bridge example. Uh, you can see it's got two layers, just a foreground layer and a background layer. And I've just got a very simple uh, HTML element object here to demonstrate the use of HTML 
in a construct project and there's a tiny bit of CSS here to style it. And this looks like this. If I preview that, uh, you can see there's just a little HTML element there um, on top of the game. Now, as you may know, in the past, a major limitation with using HTML was that it could only ever display on top of all the other content in the game. And to show uh, how this works, if I put this on the background layer, that's the HTML element object there, and preview the project, it still appears on top of everything. And the reason for that is the rest of the game is rendering into a big canvas element, uh, which is behind um, this element here. So uh, that meant it wasn't possible to show something like a sprite on top of a HTML element because there's only one canvas and it's underneath everything. HTML layers allow you to work around this limitation. So um, it's quite simple to use. Uh, if I choose the background layer and I enable the new setting HTML elements layer, and you can see in the layers bar, a little tag icon appears to illustrate that that is now a HTML elements layer. And what that means is HTML elements on that layer uh, will now actually appear at that level in the layers and content above it, which is the foreground in this case, will now draw on top of those HTML elements. So as I previously placed this HTML element on the background layer, and the background layer is now a HTML elements layer, um, it will now appear underneath the foreground. Hopefully that all makes sense. It's a bit of a mouthful. Let's see it in action. And there we go. You can now see that the HTML element is being rendered underneath the foreground layer. So this decorative background is now appearing on top. And even as I run along, you can see uh, everything rendering on top of it. So if you use HTML for things like uh, dialogues or advanced uh, text layout or um, user interface purposes, uh, previously, it was quite difficult to interact um, standard uh, sprite objects and other construct objects with HTML. This feature should make that a lot more easier now. Um, so hopefully that's a big update to the ability to use and integrate HTML with your projects. One more thing I'll quickly show while I'm here. If you click the drop down by the preview button, uh, as of this release, you can now change what the main button does. So you can swap that preview button for example, for a debug layout button, and now every time I click this button, it will start the debugger instead of a standard preview. There's also options to, of course, change that to a remote preview, and there's a new debug project option just for consistency because that was missing previously. So now you have the options to preview or debug both the layout and the whole project. Now, there's loads more in this release. Um, if you want the full details, then check out the intervening release notes, which will all be linked from the uh, release notes. Uh, there's been absolutely loads of bug fixes, performance improvements, usability improvements, and lots of smaller new features as well. Uh, and we have, on in addition to that, uh, an impressive 28 new examples that you can find in the example browser in the new category. So there's all sorts of uh, games here, some 3D demos, there's the flowcharts examples I mentioned earlier, uh, and there's some cool animations like this one. Um, this is uh, one of my favorites because uh, if you see uh, this guy here, that's, uh, that's, that's me. <laughs> um, so that's uh, some great stuff to see there and um, check it out. And it's a packed release, as I said, so do have a read up of everything that's new, uh, have a play with it and let us know what you think. Thanks for using Construct.